Journey to Freedom. It is early summer 1851, and 12 year old Abigail Parker is still finding her way after the death of her mother the previous winter. Her father has recently made their Massachusetts farm a station on the Underground Railroad, and the two nervously await their first delivery of people on their way to Canada to escape slavery. I could not sit for being so fretful, so I paced and sometimes paused to peer out the window. Mother often said, Patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. If only I were possessed of her calm. I see no sign of our four guests, Papa announced as he returned from checking outdoors, fueling my fears that they had met with misfortune. Just then, a sudden knock sounded, and my heart took to pounding as Papa opened the door to two weary women on the stoop. He assisted the older one, who appeared to be about sixty, to a chair by the hearth. Her companion was maybe fourteen. Papa directed me to poke up the fire and fetch food and drink. When the women got back their breath, Papa asked, What of the others? Did they not accompany you? Just Nellis and me, the girl declared, and the older woman presented a letter. Papa handed the crumpled paper to me, saying, If you would, Abby, my eyes fail me in dim light. I brought the letter close by a candle and commenced reading. Dear Jonathan, I send you Nellis and Emma, separate from their two companions, who have fallen ill with fever, one seriously. We have insufficient room to hide four until they recover, so I hope you are disposed to shelter them until further transport can be arranged. Respectfully, Jacob. Papa nodded and said, We must see to their safety and comfort. I guided them to the attic hiding place, and wished them a peaceful night. Come morning, before I entered the attic, I couldn't help eavesdropping on the sound of choked coughing. Once inside, I shuddered when I saw Nellis's gaunt face. So ill she looked. I fear it's the fever, she gasped. I summoned Papa, pleading, she needs a doctor. Think of the risk, he scolded. The new law allows slave catchers to come all this way north, and if we're found harboring Nellis and Emma, well, retaliation could be grave. We must tend to this ourselves. But I lack mother's know-how for curing, I whispered. Back in Virginia, Nellis told me about some fever herbs, Emma spoke up. You daren't go out, Emma. Papa cautioned. But Abby can procure what you need. I felt near fainting, but he was resolved. Remember, he said to me, the fields have eyes and the woods have ears. Take care how you act and speak so as not to arouse suspicion. I left in haste with my basket, rehearsing Emma's words about the needed herb. Grows on edges of clearings, by streams or marshes, has dull white flowers, wrinkled leaves, and stout stem. My search seemed endless, but finally I spied some flowers seeming to match Emma's description. I plucked the plant and some familiar mint that I knew for sure by its smell. As I hurried home, I met our neighbor Mr. Carrington coming opposite. Where to in such a hurry, Miss Abigail? Undaunted, I spun a tale about hunting up mint for Mother's special cake recipe and my voice was wondrous calm as I presented a sprig for the missus. Once he'd nodded thanks and continued on, I commenced to breathe again. At home, Emma praised my harvest as she sorted through the leaves in the basket, handing me several and bidding me to mince them fine. Then she smiled. Mint, that's good. We'll add some to mend the taste of the fever tea. After Nellis drank the tea, she reclined in a comfortable doze. Emma and I watched over her, and before long we fell into voicing our worries. 
My own desperation from missing mother was deeply felt and true, but I could barely fathom Emma's fortitude in facing the rigors of slavery, as she told them. I confessed my doubt of ever being able to bear such hardships as those. It's why folks come together. Problems shared be problems halved, said Emma, smiling. You'll soon enough have the strength of a grown lady like your mama. Nellis's fever broke that night. As she and Emma prepared to continue their journey, they pledged infinite gratitude to Papa and me. Though sad to see them go, I wished them safe passage, and I thanked Emma for aiding me so in my own journey.